Feelings. Bow our heads and we'll say a Lord, give you thanks for the day, for the opportunity to gather around your word, for the opportunity to study for God and to grow. Thank you, first of all, for our mothers and the influence that they were on us. Thank you now for the opportunity, Lord God, to study. Bless us in Jesus' name. My brothers, my sisters, So she was a little bit of a mama bear. Um, rat got in the house, made it home in our house, scared us now and then, run up somebody's arm when they open a drawer, right? Hop out in front of us in the, in the early morning and freak my sisters out. Well, it bit my little brother one night in the crib and that was it. So all night long, my mother sat in the kitchen with a pellet gun. <laughs> Just sitting at the kitchen table, waiting for this rat to appear. And all of a sudden at like two o'clock in the morning, you're, I got it. <laughs> Responding to threats, I guess one way is to sit up all night with a pellet gun. <laughs> To protect and attack, right? Scientists talk about in creation there are several responses to threats that are natural, right? They call them fight and they call it flight, right? <coughs> One, you take a stand and you fight and you defend and you, you, you face the threat head on and you attack it with a BB gun or whatever. Flight, maybe you don't to get away, you just need to get away, so you turn and you run, try and preserve yourself, right? Fight, flight. There's another response, though. It's one that you don't see a lot in nature, in creation. Probably the place that you see it the most in creation is with your mother. And it's the response that Peter talks about in our text today. We've been reading through the book of 1 Peter. The theme is born into a living hope. The idea is that because Jesus rose from the grave, you and I are guaranteed salvation. You and I know that our sins are forgiven. We were born into this living hope, a hope that does not die, that cannot be drowned. A hope that all the promises that God makes to you and me will come true. He will make sure that all of those things happen. He holds my, my future. He holds my present. He holds my eternity. And he has promised that all the promises that he makes to me, he will make sure that they come true. And so you and I walk through faith, walk through life, with this hope, with this faith that does not die because it is anchored in the living God. We face whatever there is to face, whatever this world happens, what brings at us is a hope that we know that Christ can and will take care of all things. Amen? Amen. Today we're going to talk about living that hope out in the world, especially when people are coming at us. They're insulting us, they're attacking us, they're cutting us down, they're interfering with us, they're causing problems for us. How do we respond? How does this living hope that we were born into, what does that guide us to do when there's someone at school that's bullying me, someone at home that's not treating me very well, my neighbor who's throwing dog poop over the, over the fence at me or whatever? How do I respond? How would God have me respond? What does my living hope say? Right? I want you to listen a little bit. In the program, there's some verses that are printed there. And one of them we're going to have to turn back. But if you look on page 11, this is what Peter writes. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, on the contrary repay evil with blessing. Because to this you were called, so that you may inherit the blessing. Turn back for me to page 9. There's a reading from Peter. I'm sorry I didn't include it, but verse 14 has something else there. It says, you see where I am? 
But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. We'll come back to the other verses in a minute. Notice what Peter writes there. When it comes to those who are insulting you, those who are threatening you, those who are attacking you, first thing he says there in verse 9, he says, what? Don't attack them back. <clears throat> Don't repay insult with insult. So the fight thing, he says, that's not really how you should respond. If someone is insulting you, if someone is threatening you, if someone is saying all these things to you, he's saying you should not respond by attacking them back. That, that's our natural response, right? Someone calls you a name, what? I got a better one for you, right? And it starts to become this attack thing. That's not how God would have us respond when someone attacks. He says, don't repay insult with insult. Next one there, he says, don't be afraid of them. You don't have to run away. You don't have to be afraid. They can come at you if they want, but you don't be afraid. Fight fight or flight. That's neither one of those do you and I need to do. There's another response. It's interesting because what was going on in Peter's day sounds a lot like what's happening in our world today. Christians were not loved universally by their society. A lot of people thought Christians were weird. They didn't abide by all the things that the rest of society was doing. They were considered divisive because they didn't join in all the pagan rituals that everyone else did. They were considered uh, kind of uh, uh, stubborn because they wouldn't give up their, their teachings or their beliefs. They weren't universally loved. Peter writes to them, even though there are people out there who insult you, call you names, tell lies about you, you don't what? Insult them back. You don't need to be afraid of them either. So how would God have us respond? This is what he says. Back on page 11. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. He said, even though they're insulting you, even though they're calling you names, even though they're attacking you, even though they're undermining you, your response should be one of gentleness, respect, the gospel. Really what he's saying there is respond with grace, right? I can't help but think of my mother when I was not the most loved, lovable child. Remember those days? And everything your mother did annoyed you? Is it just me? No? Yeah, we're, we're you know, she, she would talk too loud, she talked too soft, she walked too this way, she walked too that way. Everything she did, you were just annoyed with, right? I remember one time we were going to the movie theater and uh, a bunch of kids from school were standing outside the movie theater. I'm like, oh no, right? And I'm, a, I'm an obnoxious young person. I'm walking up there, I'm just annoyed that my mother is with me, and she's, oh, who are your friends? Like, oh. <laughs> and I snapped at my mom. I should not have snapped at my mom, but I did. How did my mom respond to that? Did she attack me? She put up. I probably deserved it, but she didn't. Did she just walk away and say, you know what, I'm done with you? She put up. But that's not what she did. How did she respond to me? grace and patience and love even when I was attacking her unfairly she responded with grace <coughs> you think back at the times that maybe you didn't always treat your mother the way that you ought to said some things did some things thought some things carried an attitude that maybe wasn't exactly right the way that your mother responds in grace to you in love towards you accepting you even though you're attacking her that's how God would have us deal with those who insult us, those who attack us, to deal with them in grace. The same grace that your mother had for you. The grace that Jesus has for you and me, right? The grace that says even though you and I don't always do the things that we know we should do, the fact that you and I don't always say the Christian thing, do the Christian thing, act the Christian way, 
The same way that you and I sometimes fail to do the good Christian thing that we know we should do, but we're lazy or we're selfish or we're angry or whatever. And Jesus still deals with us with grace. He loves us. He accepts us. He doesn't repay our insults or our disobedience by throwing a temper tantrum, stomping off and carry, taking his ball home. But he loves us. Fight, flight, grace. You, you have people that get under your skin, right? People that you just don't seem to be able to get along with. People who just kind of rub you the wrong way. Right? Don't you? You could, you could argue back and cause a big scene. Right? You could run away and just ignore them and never be around them. Maybe sometimes that's me. What Peter here says is deal with them in love and in grace. And there is no greater way to show love towards someone, especially someone that you're not getting along with, than to share with them the reason for the hope that you have. Right? That's what he says. Why is it that even when someone is insulting you, even when someone is maybe attacking you, that you can sit there with confidence, that you can sit there with peace, that you can sit there with joy and, and, and kindness, because your identity is not tied up in what they think about you or what they say about you. You are called a child of God because of what Christ has done. You have God's promise that he will always be with you and will make everything work out for you. You have God's promise that heaven is your hope and that your presence and your future and your eternity are in God's hands. Your value in life, your view of self is not determined by what they think about you, but it is, and it cannot be changed by what they think about you. Your identity and value is determined by Christ and what he has done. And what God has said is, you are my child, I love you, I will never leave you, and I will make all things work out for your... And I don't need to sit here and get angry and defensive and repay insult with insult, but I can take the insult and use it as an opportunity to share what? The grace and the love of God. Notice what he says. Be prepared. Give a reason for the hope that you have. Yeah. Goes on and he says this. Keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. That's hard. Right? That's hard. When someone is slandering you, when someone is tearing you down, when someone is saying things about you, to respond in good behavior, loving behavior. <coughs> That's what our living hope calls us to do. The hope that we have in Jesus says that I live my life not by the rules of the world, not by insult for insult, but by the grace of God that loves even when you don't love me back. <laughs> Just as Christ loved me, so I love those who don't always love me back. The same way that your mother loved you, even when you were difficult, right? Disobedient, disrespectful. He says this, he ends with this. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good. <coughs> Whose encouragement for us is even in the face of opposition, even in the face of adversity, even in the face of those who would insult, treat one another with love and respect and kindness. And they ask you why it is that you can face all of these adversity and all of these challenges with joy and happiness on your face. And tell them that it is what it is the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and join together in the next song. Thank you.